Well, good morning, good morning. Um, I am going to share Michael Bryson's story. He had one missing at a hobo camp. Um, I'm just going to share this out so people know that I am live. But um, I was going to go later. But I wanted to bring attention to Michael Bryson story who went missing in Oregon. He was partying at a, what they call a hobo camp in Oregon. So I'm gonna bring attention to his case today. And good morning for those that just came in. I'm just getting started. So I'm bringing it, his name is Michael Bryson. And his parents have uh, built a website for him called the Michael Bryson Foundation. It's for um, people that have gone missing so they can build up funds and such to help find their missing family members. So I'm going to be reading some information from that site, and then I will show you a little bit on that site of what they put together. So on August 5th, this is um, called Michael's Army, and his family put it together. So this is his family talking about Michael's story. And I figured it's best to go from the family's point of view. So we know the story very well about Michael. So in the pictures that I'm showing is um, Michael's face and his tattoos and such. <clears throat> so the title is Michael's Army. On August 5th, I heard the news. I thought like many probably did that he would turn up soon. He is just partying with his friends, right? The assumption was wrong. Days went by without a trace of Michael Bryson. Family and friends came out to help with the ground search at Camp Hobo and surrounding areas, but to no avail, Michael's parents were devastated, his family was devastated, and his true friends were devastated. As Tina put it, this is a parent's worst nightmare. Four months into this nightmare, there is still no trace of their beloved son, Michael. On August 19th, the family and friends held a circle of hope at the gazebo in Harrisburg, a place known by locals as a place to gather to celebrate all kinds of things. While this was not a celebration, it was a significant event for all who knew and loved Michael and his family. The tears of the pain and the devastation were written all over the faces of those who came, especially those closest to Michael. But there was something else present that, that day. There was love, there was togetherness, and there was hope. The community came together that day and turned the search for Michael Bryson into a worldwide story of hope, love, and understanding. When we walked away from that night, there were tears, but there was hope that something good was going to happen and Michael would be found. This event proved to be the launching point for what we now call Michael's Army. And ultimately, this website, SARS and law enforcement have done what they could, thousand helped with the search. Thousands in praying and thousands have reached out, but their pain, the pain and emptiness persists. So what do we do now? How do we move forward? What information do we listen to? What information is true? Which person is really a witness? Which person is really a friend? 
which lead is the right direction? Which person can we can help the most? Do we need the sheriff, the detectives, the PIs, or the help from a stranger? The questions are endless. In the search for answers, what we have found is a world of drug and alcohol addiction and mental health problems. Does this change your commitment to this story? Does it matter that drugs are, were involved? Does learning that change that change your opinion of our need to find out what happened to Michael? One thing is clear, something happened to Michael that night. He did not just vanish into thin air. Michael doesn't deserve this and his family doesn't deserve to go through the agony of not knowing what happened to him. As we move forward in our search for Michael, I can tell you this, Michael's army is relentless. His army will not stop until the truth is found. We will ignore the speculations and the theories being spread by those who do not have the family's best interest at heart. We hope that you will join us in the mission. We are all in this together. We will stand with each other while we find answers. The truth will come out and we will bring Michael home. So that was very, very um, sweet story on that website. I'm gonna share that website with you guys, show you it a little bit of what they put together. And then I'm gonna share some of the news um, articles. So this is the website. It has the emails. Um, the foundation has been developed since 2021. There's merchandise to put together for searches. SARS. <clears throat> the FBI's National Crime Information, NCIC, recently released its 2019 missing person and identify person statistics as of December 31st. So this has like information about what to do when a person goes missing. Like it just has information, like five things you can do. Um, if you can't find a loved one. And has all his searches. I'm just kind of showing you through the website. If you want to donate, like search supplies, drone, SARS binders, stuff like that. And the features projects of for Michael Bryson search. Parish's blog. She has a few groups on Facebook. All right, so this is Michael's family. It's taken me a while to put into words what I really need to and want to say. Today is a day set aside for thanks. With that being said, here we go. I am so thankful for my relationship with God and what he has shown me during the, my lifetime. He has not only given me a family, who I am grateful for, five siblings, at least 60 plus first cousins, a mother and a papa close friends, in-laws, and a group of people I, can, I call them friends. But he has given me a beautiful wife. This marriage has been through a lot of peaks and valleys. But most of all, it gave us two beautiful children. Krista is one of the most caring people I know. She gets it from her mother. She also has a strong conviction of right and wrong, I guess, for me. Michael has taught us patience and how to laugh, not only out loud, but at ourselves. The world has brought a better place because of these three people. Who am I very grateful for? As I sit here on the steps, soaking in all of God's wonders, I am at peace knowing that our son is at peace, no longer fighting his demons, but loving his creator, looking down on us and reminding us how to love one another. May God bless each and every one of you today and always, Parish. 
So this kind of explains the, his family and stuff. And they still are, you know, trying to find Michael. They haven't found him anywhere. Um, this is a little video. Okay, I'm going to try and get through this uh, without too much emotion. I want to thank each and every one of you who have uh, come out here tonight. First of all, I want you all to know that um, we're going to find Michael. Number two, there's somebody out there that knows something. We've gone two weeks with no answers, no solid leads, really no clues. What tonight is about is getting Michael's face, name, everything about our son back in front of everyone's face on the news, on the radio, wherever we can. The amount of love, unconditional love that I have seen from everybody who has been at camp, been in the bushes, been in the water, and most importantly, been on their knees. We have seen and felt each and every one of them. And it's given us the strength to continue to search for Michael. We haven't given up on Michael. One way or another, we're going to bring him home. Again, this is not a celebration of life. It's not a memorial. It's a circle of hope. We are hoping to get answers. We are hoping to bring our son home. You guys, just keep your eyes and ears open. If your parents and you had kids that were up there, ask questions. We got somebody we love who's missing their child, you know? Share our posts on Facebook. This thing so far is going worldwide. We've got people in Australia, England, Germany, Russia, and all over the United States following this. Please come up Saturday and Sunday. We need people searching still. I'm not going to give up. We're going to bring Michael home. I know there are a lot of people here. A lot of people knew Michael, and a lot of people were, were at the rave. And I know you guys all loved Michael, too. And you felt very deep love for him. Imagine what the family's feeling that they don't have their, their, their son. So if you know something, please, for the love of God, just even make an anonymous phone call to the family if you have to. But we've got to find him. We've got to bring him home one way or the other. And that's the most important thing tonight. It's not pointing fingers or anything else but that. So please say something. Let's bring him home. I'm going to copy that link as well and put it in the comments. I'll put it in the description as well because I know a lot of people do replay. Um, a lot of people don't come into the lives because um, I know it's summertime. Usually during, during the school year, people come in the lives during the day. Um, So this is just notes from like people that have helped them. If you want to join their mailing list, uh, sponsors and volunteers, um, the National Helpline, 1-800-662-HELP-4357. That's the helpline for treatment centers. And it has the website for treatment centers. And their mission to provide education, support, and advocacy for persons served, their families, or significant others, coordinate with law enforcement, media, and families to spread the word of a missing person. Assist SARS and additional resources and organization to help the efforts meet the individual needs of the person served without regard to race, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual orientation, age, disabilities, veteran status, or ability to pay. 
respect for the person served as well as their families and significant others or individuals while assuring their right for confidentiality, right and dignity. Utilize input for the, from the person served, personnel and board members to the decision making process whenever possible. So they made this website to be helpful and to raise money for, you know, the missing, other missing persons besides their own son, which is amazing. Um, they are very caring people. They are very religious, as you've seen, you know. Uh, which is great. You know, that does... Some people are, some people aren't, depending on the person. So Michael did have some addiction issues, but that doesn't make him any different from any other person. Um, it is a worldwide issue and a world epidemic um, that is just going on everywhere. But the first um, news I wanted to read to you guys for, you know, the news on Michael. <clears throat> oh, I wanted to stop that right there for a second and show you guys real quick. So his tattoos are the lower front leg is these designs right here. His ribcage has this. His back of arm, um, lower front leg, his right leg, and his left leg. So he has a lot of tattoos. Sorry, I'm just kind of skimming through, but... Um, I want to make sure I get everything out there that's um, necessary to get out there. So a 27-year-old Eugene man is missing, and Lane County Sheriff's Office is seeking the public's attention, I mean the public's help finding him. Michael Bryson was last seen on Wednesday at a roadside campground. And this was August 7th, 2022, when this was published. Oh, did I hit the wrong thing? Of course I did. Let's get this back. Michael Bryson was last seen on Wednesday at a roadside campground near Bryce Creek Road in South Lane County, according to the Sheriff's Office news release, at about 4.30 a.m. Bryson was reported as wandering away from a group of friends in an unknown direction and has not been seen since. He's described as being six foot tall, two inches, and about 180 pounds. He has short brown hair and hazel eyes and was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, tan shorts and white and white crocs with rainbows. He may also be wearing a brown corduroy baseball cap. Lane County Sheriff's Office search and rescue search teams tried finding him Wednesday and Thursday. They are continuing the search Friday but so far have not located any clues as to which direction Michael may have gone. The release stated Michael left his camping gear at the campground and his phone has been powered off for several days. People with information of operation should call the Sheriff's Office at 541-682-4150. Press one in reference case number 20-5286. So that is the first news release on Michael Bryson.
and his family still fighting, you know, still writing stories about Bryson and putting out the information there. And keeping his story out there, which, which again, he went missing from Oregon at what they call Hobo Campground. So this article is from two weeks after Michael went missing. Also missing in um, America um, made the flyers that I shared on that little video there. So it's been two weeks since a Eugene man disappeared from a campground outside Cottage Grove. A 27 year old Michael Bryson remains missing since he wandered away from his friends. Around 4.30 a.m. on Wednesday, August 5th, Bryson is described as six foot, two inches tall and weighing 180 pounds. He has short brown hair and hazel eyes. When he disappeared from the Bryce Creek Road area near Lund Park and Hobo Camp, Hobo Camp Campgrounds, he was wearing a white t-shirt, tan shorts, and white Crocs with multicolored splashes. He may also be wearing a brown corduroy baseball hat. Authorities say Bryson left behind his camping gear and equipment, and his phone was also powered off for several days. Search dogs have been used to try to find him, but nothing has turned up as of yet. Turned up yet as to his whereabouts. There is a $10,000 reward for information leading to Bryson. A Facebook group has also been created to share his information. The Lane County Sheriff's Office says anyone with any information on Michael Bryson should contact the, them immediately, dial 541-682-4150, then press 1 and reference case 20-5286. So 819 of 2021, they had a vigil at 730. It was held at Harrisburg Gazebo for, for Dyson. So that's one of his pictures. And then this is the area of the campground right here. So it's like a area so and this is Michael it's a very young man 27 years old and they you know the family's very put um, adamant putting out information about every day I did contact them yesterday because when I was looking up cold cases, because um, I do a lot of the cold cases, some of the newer cases with the younger children, um, and I asked her if this case had gotten cold, and it has not. For some reason, it did come up on the cold cases in Oregon. They have a new detective on the case now who is investigating his case more deeper. Um, and closer so she said he's a very like a very good detective and he's working hard on his case so hopefully you know he'll find the answers i know they did find some of his belongings and such so the parents did have to pick up you know some of their son's belongings but they didn't find him so god only knows you know what happened to Bryson, I mean Michael. But hopefully, you know, with all, with the new detective and everything, they will find the answers that they need and want. Every, 
this has to be devastating for the parents, but they are very dedicated and they have a lot of um, support. Oh, this is another video about the search from the news. Stir. It's a new way to watch TV for free. It's live local news, live sports, movies, TV shows, cult favorites, viral videos, and more. Just go to the App Store and download Stir. Free TV, anytime, anywhere. And we are looking ahead. A team of volunteer searchers are headed out tomorrow to look for Michael Bryson. He's been missing since August of last year. Bryson disappeared while camping with friends. Now, searchers are going to be meeting Saturday at 9 a.m. and coordinating their efforts from the Bryce Creek Trail, not far from when he disappeared. Organizers are asking anyone who wants to help to please check in so they can keep track of the area as well as volunteers. So that was the search area that they went to search for him. There hasn't been any newer searches for Michael. Um, I'm going to bring you to his group page and show you, you know, what that looks like. This is his group page. Let's find Michael Bryson. An hour ago, they posted these pictures of Michael. Um, the tip line is 866-557-9988. Lynn County, 541-967-3950. The case number has changed to 17-2729. And he's on name. Oh, that's a different person. So that's another person that went missing in their area. So they've had other people like post, you know, missing people from Oregon. And this. Thank you, Michael's Army, for the shares from the Oregon State Police missing person of the month. They told us that it was has been the highest shared post so far. 35,000 shares and still going. You all are awesome. Now let's get answers and bring our boy home. That's, that's really good. So they, they post other people's pictures and stuff on Michael's page. We don't you bring other people home as well. So if you want to join that, I will put the link up. So there's another link. But I did want to get his story out there, and I will be going live in a little, like, um, later on with updates and some other cases. Tomorrow there will be a news conference for Cody Bigsby I'm hearing. So thank you for people that stopped in and I hope you guys hit that like button and share this out. So Michael got some attention today 
And thank you again for coming in and have a great day. I'm sending you all love and light and enjoy this, you know, sunny day if it's sunny where you are as well. Love you all.